Now what we'd like to share with you is when you see a function, are we able to graph that function? And graphing these functions are very similar to how we've graphed um, other equations in the past. Other than just having a y equals a 2x, we have a f of x equals 2x. So don't let that change mess with you because it's essentially the same process. So typically what we would do is we would develop some type of a table, look for some points. So let's imagine x and what its output would be as an f of x. So if x were, and we like to choose a couple of points when you plot, you want to choose at least three. The ones I love are negative one, zero, and positive one. Gives me a chance to see what happens at zero, gives me a chance to see what happens when my input is negative, and it gives me a chance to see what happens when my input is positive. So when I put negative one into this function, What's f of x? Negative one, I would put that in for x, so it would be two times negative one, which equals negative two. When I put zero in, f of that becomes f of zero, so it's two times zero equals zero, and then with one, two times a one equals a two. So my solutions or my coordinate points I have now, I have the coordinate point of negative one and negative two, zero and zero, and one and two. So that gives me enough information to go ahead and graph that. So let's draw, draw just a rough graph. I know that I have a point of negative one and negative two. I have a point of zero and zero, and I have a point of one and positive two. Whoops, sorry, first one was negative one and down two. Something wasn't lining on up. That's why we take three points. I saw this third point, and I was trying to make a connection what was going on and something wasn't lining on up. So again, that's why we use three points. That point is a bad point. I miscalculated. And there we have the graph of f of x. And in this particular case, f of x is 2x. All right, kind of got the idea of that. Well, let's try another one. Let's try uh, g of x. And let's say that 2x plus 4. How would we graph that one? Well, likewise, we would draw our table, our x and our f of x, our input and our output. And let's imagine a couple of inputs that we want to put in. Again, we need to have at least three points when we're graphing so we don't make a mistake. Again, I like to choose the same points, but you can choose anything you want. Uh, negative one, if I put a negative one, whoops, that's g of x now, isn't it, folks? Not f of x. So if I put negative one into that function, that become two times a negative one plus a four equals two. If I put a zero into this function, that's two times zero plus a four equals a four. And if I put a positive one, two times a one plus a four equals a six. And then from there, I have my coordinate points. I have a point of negative 1 and 2, 0 and 4, 1 and 6. So there are three coordinate points. From there, I'm able to go ahead and make a rough graph. The first one is at negative 1 and up 2. The second one is over at 0 and up 4. And the other one's over at 1 and up 6. They all match up on a straight line. And this one was my g of x. And that one equaled, again, what we had before, 2x plus 4. So that's how we can graph using function notation. And I know most of you guys are looking at, we haven't really changed or done anything different than how we've learned to graph before when we had y equals 2x or y equals 2x plus 4. And that's correct.
It's the same process, but we're going to be using function notation to do so.